Greetings, citizens of Nerdtropolis. Sean Todd here, the mayor of Nerdtropolis, and my guest today is Ernie Hudson, who stars in the NBC series Quantum Leap. Mr. Sorry. Ernie Hudson. Hey, good morning. Good morning. I'm so thrilled to have this opportunity to talk to such a legend. Oh, geez. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's no secret. I'm an OG Ghostbusters fan. What you can't see behind me is this huge Ghostbusters collectible wall, a bunch of stuff behind me, uh, but I keep that to, to myself sometimes. But it's great to see you part of another sci-fi fandom, Quantum Leap. Yeah, yeah, it's very, uh, it's very exciting. I mean, I love the show, and it's been great being a part of it. And I love the, the whole, you know, the fandom, the, the people who really support the show. And it does remind me a lot of the Ghostbuster fans who have been 40 years long loyal. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, and I grew up a Quantum Leap fan. I loved watching it with my parents. Um, it does have a dedicated fan base, and it's about to wrap its second season. It's it's crazy. You know, it's already been two seasons. Everyone's looking forward to more. But what do you think sets the revival apart from its original series, and how do you feel it honors the legacy while bringing something fresh? Well, I think it's a, we honor the legacy by not trying to go in and change a lot, uh, not to do a reboot, but to come in, you know, um, to... It's an extension. It's 30 years in the future. So it's the same basic timeline. Um, and the show is very similar, but also very different. Uh, the original show was pretty much the two guys in the leap, whereas now we get to see Ziggy and behind the scenes and what you know keeps it all afloat, what makes it happen, um, the dangers and the threats that are occurring while they're in the middle of their leap. Um, and uh, and we get to know the team. And that's um that's that's a different take. And also, as we get deeper into it, the real complications, not just about, you know, leaping into someone and how do we change that uh, scenario, but uh, but what's going on in the real world, uh, the timeline of now. And you brought it up, the team. The team is amazing. The cast is amazing. And, you know, it, it's led by Raymond Lee, who I love in the series. Like, he's yeah, like almost yeah. like the perfect fit. Right. What did you first notice about him and his performance in the series? Yeah, I, I love Raymond. You know, I, I can't say I've been a fan a long time because I was sort of aware, but I hadn't really seen a lot of his work. But he is, um, you know, he just has an empathy. He has something about him that's kind of universal. And I can't think of anyone who would have been a better fit because... And and not just on camera, but off camera, there's something, you know, he, he just connects and you and it's easy to connect with him. And I think it's easy for fans, especially if you're going to be taking on other, um, you know, lives or going into other situations. And he's just a perfect guy for the show. I think uh, we're, we're very blessed to have him, um, you know, um, leading the show. And then, of course, um, uh, Caitlin uh, Bassett uh, playing Addison um his fiance sort of kind of um uh, yeah, the whole cast is, is pretty amazing yeah it really is and you know it explores you know themes of redemption and second chances what do you think makes this concept so timeless well i think we're at a we're at a very strange time uh in our history in the human history um what's going on in our country a lot that um I used to think it was generational, but I think a lot of things we really don't understand. I think we really do need to sort of look outside of ourselves and reconsider a lot of things because we're making choices. If the show does nothing else, it it just really speaks to the choices we make lead to certain outcomes and we can make other choices. I think right now we're at a place where we really, really should consider making other choices because... Uh, as opposed to doubling down on going in the direction we're going. And so we know the outcome of these situations, but he sort of gets in there and mixes it up and there can be another alternative. And I think in our real world, I think it's easy for me to relate to because, um, yeah, we're we're in a very, very strange time. And I think we all feel it. No matter what your position is, I think we all feel like, you know what, uh, this this is coming to uh, not a necessarily an end that we want to see. So I think the show is very, um, if, if people watch the show, I think we can connect. And there's still something I really uh, love about really being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes, you know. What I love about this show is, you know, it just takes our mind off a lot of things as well. If you could leap to any time period, which one would it be? 
Um, you know, it's funny because I'm a big fan of the 50s. I grew up, I, grew, I was born in the 40s, so I grew up during that time. Even though I was an African American, and probably <laughs> I don't know where I would lead to, but I love the because it was sort of the beginning of a new time, rock and roll, and just space, and just a lot of things that were going on. And um, I love that period. But um, if I could leap to any time, you know, in the future, you know, hopefully, um, uh, and to see a brighter future, because what I see in movies, uh, the future does not look so promising um, to, you know, leap ahead and see we're not all zombies or something. So uh, I'm, I'm curious about what comes next, especially when you get to be my age, you kind of go, well, I might not be around to see it, but I'm, I'm curious as to uh, what's to come. I, I love it. Ernie, thank you so much for this chat. I mean, hopefully we can talk again soon, but this was a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Once again, this is Sean Taj, the mayor of Nortropolis, and stay tuned for more movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers.